Hey everybody, Scott with EFI System Pro here, and today we're going to talk about what's inside of a sniper. Uh, there seems to be a lot of interest on in what's going on in here. Rather than take yours apart, I'll take mine apart and you can see. So the first thing we're going to start with is the throttle position sensor here. No real need to take that off of there. It attaches to the primary throttle shaft and moves along with that. The reason I specified primary throttle shaft is that if you happen to be using a progressive linkage, then the throttle position sensor reads off the primary throttle shaft and not the secondary that isn't moving till 40% throttle. So next we'll move around to the back side. This is the idle control valve. Uh, idle control motor, IAC, it's called a lot of things. We'll pop that off and you can see what that looks like on the inside. What you can see here is when you turn the key on before you start the engine, this plunger extends all the way out and touches the surface inside. That completely closes off all air going through the throttle circuit. Then after that touches the 0% point up against that, it then backs out to your parked IAC setting for startup. So now from the IAC, we're gonna move on to where the fuel injectors are. This is an area that some of you will actually get into because sometimes the injector connectors come off or injectors go bad. So we'll get in there and you can see what's going on in there. Now it's just these two screws on either side. Now at this point, once the screws are out, the injectors bridge the gap between this piece and this piece held in just by O-rings. So you can just pull it apart. And you don't want to snatch it apart because there's some wires and you don't know if the injector is going to stay with the cover or stay with the throttle body. So in this case, they stayed with the cover, so we'll pop them out of the cover. Here you can see all the wiring that comes out for all the accessory connections. The two holes there where the injectors go in. And these are the injectors themselves. Now these are the connectors that everybody complains about. And what a lot of people do just to be sure that they stay secure is put a zip tie around here to keep them on. So now we'll take the other side off. Now you can see in here is just like the other side, some wiring for external devices, the two injector holes. You can also see a little bit where the extra injector holes would be for a super sniper with eight injectors. The throttle bodies are exactly the same, they just don't machine the extra holes if they don't need them. And so since these parts are off, we can talk about how the fuel flows. So normally the way this is set up, fuel comes in here, fills this cavity, comes across this hose, fills this cavity, builds up pressure against the regulator. When it gets to 60 PSI, the regulator opens, that's any excess back to the tank. As long as the pump's running, it's gonna hold 60 PSI and have it ready there for the injectors. Now we get a lot of questions about, can you use the front ports for a feed or for the gauge? You can use these two ports on the front for a feed, either one you want. You just move the plug to the place of the fitting, move the fitting to where you want the inlet, and it'll all work the same. It'll, it'll fill this whole thing with fuel if you want to put a gauge on either of these ports, you can do that also. Now, if you're running one of the OE tank modules that has the built-in regulator, then you remove this fitting and put a plug in there. That lets all of this still fill up with fuel, but can't come out here to return back to the tank. The OE module sends fuel at 60 PSI, so there's no need to regulate it otherwise. So now we can open this up and see the regulator.
Now you do want to be careful in removing and installing these. The spring inside pushes up against this back housing here and it's pretty thin sheet metal so if you push that in or out it's going to change the calibration of the regulator. Now you can see there's not much in here. Fuel just goes through that little screen to protect the regulator and then back to your tank. Now if you notice that there's an o-ring right here that's beneficial for turbo guys. If you have a turbo setup that's blowing through your sniper you can remove that regulator, put this cover back on, use a remote mounted regulator that's boost reference. Because anytime you're putting air pressure to the tip of the injector where fuel comes out, you need to increase the fuel pressure the same amount as the boost. Otherwise, you're essentially lowering your fuel pressure as much as your boost pressure is. So now we can get into the ECU, and that's about the last part of this thing. So now that the ECU is off, you can see there's not much in there. Here's the ECU. So this is the intake temperature sensor made into the ECU and can't be changed. The same for the MAP sensor. The MAP sensor seals to this. That's ported all the way down to the bottom and that's how it gets its manifold vacuum signal. You can see here, all of these wires are made into this so they can't be changed. I get a lot of questions from people that have damaged a wire or something like that and they want to be able to change the harness and it's just not possible. All of this stuff is permanently attached to the ECU and can't be changed. So that pretty well wraps up what's inside of a sniper. Now if you have any questions, feel free to comment, shoot us an email. If there's anything about these snipers you'd like to see a video on, definitely comment and let us know. We really want everybody to understand what they're buying as much as they can. So now I gotta get this thing put back together. It's a sniper that sits at my desk and whenever somebody calls and they need to be walked through something, I have it there. So I'll get to that and we'll see you in the next video.